So now, at this point, we have all of the surfaces that we need on the upper, and I'm going to begin creating the blends between the door flange surface and all of the upper surfaces. Now, this surface is typically given to us from engineering. This is a highly engineered surface. It takes in consideration door swing, uh, the uh, gap that is needed for proper closure of the door, things like over slam and such. So this surface isn't something that you're typically going to design. It's going to be designed for you and given to you. Now, a lot of times, because engineering makes the surface, it's not of the best quality. You may have to clean it up, and uh, the cleanup tolerance that you may get is 0.1, maybe 0.2 of a mil to the original surface. It's going to be very, very, very close to the original, so you won't be able to move it much. Um, this is typically not a seen surface, only when the door is open, you're getting in and out of the vehicle. So um, a high quality, 100% class A surface is not necessarily uh, what we aim for. Uh, engineering, gap, flush, fit, uh, swing are things that are, um, that are looked for in the creation of the surface and all that stuff is done by engineering. So now that we have our initial surface from engineering, we want to begin creating all of the geometry that we need in order to create the blends that wrap around. Now, a lot of people will go ahead and do joins on these surfaces and then just simply do a blend or a fillet of sorts between this surface and the others. And for this demo, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to redo this demo and do it the correct fashion. Now, at this point, I'm going to go in, I'm going to right mouse click on join. I'm going to say define work object and join. I'm going to pick these surfaces and select OK. Now that I have my upper joined together, what I want you to notice is that I still have a hard edge here. Simply hide this curve. This edge between these two surfaces is still a hard edge. Now, if I go in and try to fill it this, I'm going to come up with a problem. So before I do that, I'm going to show you another filling technique. I'm going to go in and do what's called a chordal fillet. This chordal fillet is going to go on this edge. And I can tell it to be a conic fillet. And I'm just going to increase the conic parameter a little bit. And with this, I'm going to specify, we'll say, 15 and preview. Now we can see it throws in this fillet. Let me select OK. So this is a conic fillet. Let me go ahead and hide this door upper mesh. And what that conic fillet does for us is, regardless of the size of the fillet that you put in, what it, or I should say the, the size that you put in, the radius is going to change as it travels along to get the actual distance between the tangencies the size you determine. 15 is telling me I'm, I'm 15 millimeters from this point to this point. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller on the front end. Now you'll notice because I used a conic fillet, the back end I'm going to leave rather large and the front end I'm going to shrink it. I have a parameter here, I'm going to double click on that parameter, I'm going to say 5. And I'm also going to change the variation to linear. Select OK. Now here we can see I get a nice fillet that runs the entire length from 4 and a half. And because it's a conic, it has some acceleration leading into the bottom surface. Now I'm going to prove that by showing my cutting plane. I'm going to double click on my cutting planes and for my elements I'm going to pick this surface. Now when I zoom in on my torques you'll notice that this is not perfectly flat. Or I should say not a perfect radius. It's, it begins to accelerate as it goes into my adjacent blend. 
If I come in here and modify the conic parameter, go up to 0.7, let's say, you'll notice I get more acceleration coming in. If I need a little bit more, I'll go 0.75, and you'll see it gets pretty much almost right on into being curvature continuous. In a lot of places on the internal parts of a car, plastic parts, parts that are wrapped in cloth, have a deep grain, this is an acceptable condition. Okay. Not in all cases, only in some cases. And now if we take a look, you'll notice that over here, it, it's pretty close to being curvature. There's a little bit of a deviation. And in a lot of cases, that deviation may be acceptable. Okay, let me look up front, and we'll see the same thing. A little bit of deviation, but we do have the acceleration coming in and coming out. Let me hide my cutting plane. Next, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to throw another fillet on this back edge using the same uh, uh, type of function, a, blunt, a filleting function, but it's a different filleting function. This time I'm going to use what's called a shape fillet. With the shape fillet, I'm able to pick the two surfaces because this is all joined and filleted. This is seen as one surface now. In this surface, I want to make sure that these arrows point to what would be the center of the blend or the fillet. Again, I want another coral fillet with a conic parameter, and I'll go up to 0.6 to give it a little bit more peak. And what's my value? I'll uh, start off with something like 5 to do a preview. Now we can see here, it gives us a pretty good looking fillet. All right. Now, this is sort of a shortcut to creating your fillets on the interior of a, of a large part like this. Um, some places this may be acceptable. If this is an early mock-up, or if this is something that is just for a quick study, stuff like this is generally more than acceptable. For final Class A surfaces, you may want to build these differently, which I'm going to show in the next video. But for something like this, which is a quick mock-up, this is generally more than acceptable. If I do a highlight line analysis on this now, what you'll notice is the highlight lines all touch. Um, and in some, certain cases, you can see they swing off nearly perfectly. So indicating that generally, overall, the entire length of this, it's a um, near perfect curvature condition. And again, because this is a door upper, it's probably going to be wrapped in cloth, potentially leather, uh, or it's going to have some sort of a deep grain that's going to hide a lot of those uh, areas where it may not be absolutely perfect. If this were exteriors, this would never fly. So as we take another closer look at this, you can see coming across, everything touches and it's pretty clean. Uh, another analysis type, if you're interested, you can do a porcupine analysis, and that porcupine analysis allows me to visualize what's going on just on those curves. So I'll go to Insert, Analysis, and I'll go Porcupine Curvature. And with this, I'll just pick this edge, and I will pick, I'm going to hold the control key down and pick this edge, and I'm going to increase my amplitude. So you can really see what's going on. Okay, so we can see that it has a nice coming in, coming out. And same thing with this edge. Let me decrease my amplitude a little bit. You can see here, this is giving me a nice transition as it goes from F to 4.